The pre-millennialists don't need crystal balls, they just need two things, the Book of Revelations and an atlas. For pre-millennialists, to know geography is to know the future, as Sturm tells us. Pre-millennial geopoliticians geopolit see geography as a foreordained projection of history. Reading geography is therefore reading the future. Knowledge, whether religious, political or both combined, is power. It has the power to move the world and make sense of it. Whether it's a Mercator projection or a biblical map, how one writes and interprets that map text is based on one's authoritative power, interpretative knowledge, presuppositions and other subjectivities. It's tempting to ignore the work of pre-millennialists and other such extremists, but that would be a mistake for lots of reasons, chief among them that they have had an effect on several US presidents. The roots of premillennialism are found not in the US but in the UK. The detailed version of the ideology was developed by John Nelson Darby in the 19th century. His followers were called Darbyites and became known as dispensationalists as they split history up into different episodes or dispensations that would lead to Christ's return and thousand year rule. When the end comes, true Christians won't have any role to play as they will have been raptured off the earth to witness the tribulation below, which will include famine, plague, natural disasters and the deaths of three quarters of the world's population in the following seven years. As Sturm points out, pre-millennialists have figured out who God will be fighting against. Those armies of Satan, first led by the Muslim Alliance and then by the Antichrist's Roman Empire or European Union, whose evil eyes are set on the destruction of Israel will be completely wiped out by the hand of God in the worst battle the globe has ever seen. As determinism goes, this is as strong as you can get. For the pre-millennialists, the future is fixed and you cannot, and indeed should not, change it. This branches out into other spheres of global politics, not just war. It alters the discourse on areas like climate change. As Scrimshaw tells us, even an evangelical, fundamentalist Christian can both lament the continued course of global warming and rejoice at its consequences, fulfilling the prophecy that God is destroying the destroyers of the earth. John Agnew argues that this view alters the debate on democracy and the rule of law, both domestically and internationally. The world to come will not be peaceful, so why waste time on negotiations in domestic and international politics? If the world is going to end, and we know how it's going to end, not only can you not change it, but you should not change it, as that would be acting against the word of God. This can explain why the evangelist James Robeson, who had a significant impact on both Ronald Reagan and George W. Bush, was able to refer to peace activists as heretics, as any teaching of peace prior to Christ's return is heresy. It's against the word of God. It's antichrist. So, if the world is going to end and you can't change it and it would be heretical for you to try, then you should start behaving as if the world is going to end. The policy implications of this are grim. As Agnew points out, if the end is truly nigh, policy of any kind might seem rather pointless.